Shalom. Notice my new scenic backdrop. Um, I still own my home. The bank hasn't came to take it, although they've told us they're going to at some point. Uh, so, for now, I'm living in my son's garage. With all my stuff piled in there. What little I have. But uh, what I wanted to talk to you about was... Um, I had a rapture dream. Sort of. You guys be the determiners of that. But I wanted to talk to you about a revelation that God gave me when I was praying for a friend of mine. And uh, I also would like you guys to lift up um, Sister Vicki. I will leave her address. I'll put a little insert of it. Her son was involved in an accident where he um, smashed his face pretty bad. So he's going to need surgery. So I ask that you lift her up in prayer and him. I'll, and, and her son for his salvation also and also Matthew Wright the guy that's code researcher say a word of prayer for him he's going through some things so what I wanted to talk to you about is something that a lot of you may not be able to grasp and I pray dear Heavenly Father in the mighty name of your son Yeshua that you would open as many eyes as you can through the Holy Spirit to what I'm about to say because it is the truth from your word if a person dares to dig into your word and search it for themselves through the guidance of the Holy Spirit they will see that this is true Amen. The Lord revealed to me, and this is something you may know by reading, but maybe it's not revealed to your spirit yet, but he revealed to me that all things are in his control. And that includes every aspect of your lives. And he showed me this in dreams and spoken words to me. Uh, he told me 35 years ago that if I took a certain course of action that a certain thing would happen and there was another person involved and I talked to this person and we I said this is what God said and then this person said oh no that will never happen because now we both know and and so we can take steps to stop this from happening well what the Lord had told me would happen happened and then the other person doesn't even remember those conversations even though I have letters written that talk about that that allude to this thing so they cannot remember at all is what they say so what I want you to know is that throughout God's Word he has said that he knows all things do you think let me put this way to you do, do you think that when God placed Adam and Eve in the garden and then he came looking for Adam and Eve in the cool of the garden and they had sinned did you do you think that God did not know that Satan was going to enter the garden and that he was going to tempt them and that they were going to fail God could have put angels there to stop that God's greatest gift to us and to the angels themselves is free will God gives us all free will that means our loved ones you can pray all you want to get them in but ultimately it is what their choice is God will not violate a person's free will he wants only those in his kingdom that choose to be there and if you do a word study on the words from uh, the New Testament where it talks about predestination you'll see what I mean God saw he knew what would happen throughout time and so he saw what was going to occur so then he went back through time since he exists outside of time he went back in time and helped those whose names are written in the book 
right now in the throne room of heaven is the Lamb's Book of Life and in it already are all the names of all of those who will choose him and that is the choice God is offering each and every person I have all these notes and dreams I've got a big stack of dreams like that things that happen God is giving us a choice which side are we on and every one of those people that we love he loves he loved them so much that before the world began it says his son was slain from the foundations God knew all this when God came looking for Cain when Cain had slew Abel and he was saying hey where's your brother and Cain said hey am I my brother's keeper and he said do you not don't you know where he is and no I don't know where he is and 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 then God said no you're lying his blood cries up to me from the earth because God knew there was an angel there watching this as it took place but yet God was given Cain the chance to repent and to come clean because that's the whole thing that God is working here he wants repentance so that you can get into the kingdom and your loved ones and my loved ones and everybody in the world Saddam Hussein every evil person Christ died for them also and he gave them the chance the Lord told me even the worst hardened criminal I have spoken to them personally and gave them the opportunity and they rejected me so look at what's going on in the world right now the Iranians have smuggled in higher grade pluton uh, uranium so they could process it into plutonium at that uh, Perchin facility they will not let UN inspectors in there we know that at some point Israel strikes them another person also pray for Steve Danoon he is in Israel right now those of us that have Jewish blood feel a, a, a draw to go back home right now and so he went home for a while and so pray for him and his family there were some Jewish people killed a man and a soldier a police officer and also this man's wife was shot and a child over the last four days and um, so we need to pray for Israel they are God's apple and he loves them so continue in prayer for them don't listen to these people that say negative things about God's chosen people he loves them and he's gonna redeem those whose names are written in the book also so now I have this dream I wasn't really praying for a rapture dream I was asking God for a year now I've asked him just to give me a dream of being in his presence and I've had no dream the thing that I've struggled with is this personal thing it's not about my house being lost or any of that stuff it's it's a personal thing that has happened to me that's caused me to struggle so if you want to pray for me pray for that aspect of my life it's not about the junk none of this matters the Lord is coming soon and it's gonna go away but I have this the struggle the devil attacks me with this thorn so in this dream I see this these two young couples and I'm observing them and the man one man is talking to his wife and to the other two people and he's telling them how you shouldn't listen to your wife and you need to uh, if she tr tries to convince you you need to do something about it you know something strong about this and and he was going on and on and then the other man turns to his wife and tells her I want you to leave and she's like what and he says I want you to get out I've made my choice like that and she was a very beautiful woman and desirable homemaker all this stuff but he still told her to leave and I was shocked and then the next thing I was on a, a large landscape and it was at night and there were three tents a very large tent and these were old style tents like uh, during the Civil War those canvas style ones that have a slight roof and on the edge of the roof there were uh, was a rope and on that rope there were lanterns hanging that lit this up and there was a flagpole there with a flag by each one of the tents there were two tents up front in, in front of me and they were separated by like 50 feet or so one tent was a very large tent could hold over a hundred maybe 200 people the other tent maybe 50 or 60 and then the third tent maybe 20 25 people at the most and I was told you have to choose which camp to be in which tent and it, and it was called camps even though those were tents in front of me and it was dark and 
these lanterns were lighting it up and so I walked between the two tents the bigger one and the lar and the smaller uh, the medium one and I walked to the small tent and I opened the flap and sewed to the inside of the flap was a huge needle and the eye of the needle you had to step through that eye and I could see the shaft of the needle buried into the ground and I couldn't pull the tent away so I had to go through the needle and so I reached through and I could barely scrape by it touched both my front and my back and I had to tilt my head like this to get it to go through and when I came inside there was a huge landscape inside of this tent and it was dark there and I was standing next to these railroad tracks and this person pulling back to get back and there's a train coming at about 50 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour, a steam train with a huge white light on it or gold colored light and it had a, a wood car or coal car behind it and then it had four or five passenger cars and this thing was just barreling down on me and I woke up. So. I don't exactly understand everything. I know it's about going through the eye of the needle and, and how hard it is to get in and you have to choose a camp. But the train was almost there. It was only about 250, maybe 300 yards away. So the Lord is coming. And we have to understand that He loves us and that everything that is happening is going according to plan. My son was talking to me uh, a, a few weeks ago and we were talking about things that are happening to me and stuff and God had warned me about these things he told me before they happened that so my son was talking to me we're playing this game called mech warrior online each of the weapons do damage to your opponent but they also inflict heat upon you and if your heat gets to a certain level your machine shuts down and then everybody can attack you while your machines rebooting and they were arguing about this because it's a game that's a fantasy game that was played on a board game now it's a, a first person shooter game and so all the people were arguing on the forums about this phantom heat that that they built into this they found there was phantom heat from these guns if you fire them all at once you get a third thing that happens to you called phantom heat and the one guy that was on the forum said, the system was designed to work this way and it is functioning within the design parameters. And that shut everybody up on the forum. And then I was watching Star Trek Voyager and on episode 23, that's the number God keeps showing me over and over again, something to do with the 23rd. On episode 23, they're fighting uh, a, basically the devil inside of a dream world, because this world is just the matrix, it's a dream world. And in that, they're analyzing this system. There's only five of them in there. And they, one of the crew, I believe it's uh, Harry Kim, says, the system was designed to operate like this, and it is functioning within the design parameters. The same thing that my son had said to me. God designed all of this. He said, I created both good and evil. For my pleasure, they are created. He said that he wants to procure out of this world sons to himself people that will love him he has to be able to find out who loves him and who will freely choose him so there has to be a second choice maybe all this was planned think about that Satan his fall everything he did it he wanted to do it but it was all part of the plan the plan of salvation to give you to give your relatives to give everyone on this planet a choice who they will serve good or evil if there's no no choice how do we make a choice? So you have to respect your family members. You can pray for them and then give that to God, just like Abraham did. This is about faith. God made a covenant with Abraham and he said, now in your seed, the whole earth will be repopulated. It will be filled with your seed. And then God told Abraham to sacrifice your own son. I'm paraphrasing all this. So then Abraham took his son up there this 30-something year old boy bound him up and laid him on the altar and drew back his dagger and the angel stopped him and God said now I know you see all the way to that point now I know God says that's what God wants from you he wants faith like that because he doesn't know until he has tested you so the Word of God tells us think it not strange this fiery trial that has came upon you doesn't it? It tells you that, that Yeshua, 
Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, learned obedience by the things that he suffered. So, you can have joy knowing that no matter what happens, if you go into the fiery furnace like the three Hebrew children, if you live, if you die, God knows. God is in control. Satan is not in control. He thinks he is. He has the illusion of being in control. He's being used as a tool to separate the wheat from the tares. He has to give the tares their choice. Just like the one-third of God's holy, good, perfectly made angels fell willingly. God wants you to have faith. That is the important thing. Faith. Faith to believe in Him no matter what your eyes tell you. Bugs bugging me. No matter what your eyes tell you, that kind of faith, to believe, to dare to believe that no matter what happens to you in this life, that it's about your relationship with Almighty God, you, one-on-one -on -one with Him, not Gary, not your wife, not your children, not your best friend. Those are part of the illusion. Watch the movie The Matrix. The guy betrays them because he likes the steak, the taste of it, mm, the crunch of it in his mouth. Even though he tell, admits to Agent Smith, I know it's not real, but he's willing to sell those people down the drain, you see, for some steak. So what is your price? What camp are you in? Do you believe God? Do you have faith? Are you going to have faith when he comes back? Is he going to find faith in you, in your heart, to him? That's what he wants. He wants you to love him first. Seek him first. That's the only way you're going to make it in the rapture. You know? And all these guys telling you these stories about how it's going to happen on a feast date and all that, and it has to be. Don't buy into that stuff either. The rapture is imminent. I don't care what they say about the feast. And also, the deal about the, the woman appearing, the great sign. Read that. Read it and listen to what it says. It's talking about Israel and the birth of the Messiah. That sign in the heavens is just a sign. Just like these blood moons, right? which were more of an orange color, if you ask me. Of course, it was pretty high in the sky when it started turning out here in California. The rapture is imminent. There is no date that you can discern by looking at the Bible and studying tables. Everybody that's tried that's wrong. God gives you a feeling. He lets you know it's in the season. But those feast dates, it's could be for Israel. You see, he was talking to Jews when he said that, not to the church. He hadn't died yet. There was no church then. There was his disciples who became the apostles after he died. Peter walked with him for three years, walked on the water, and he denied him three times. He said, but when you're converted, Peter, what happened? Well, how was Peter part of the whole thing if he hadn't been converted yet? A man that put his head on the breast of the Son of God. Think. Don't let Satan rob you by using God's word against you, just like he did Eve. That's not God said. See? This thing is a secret, and when it happens, it's going to surprise even Lucifer himself. It's not going to be, oh, Lucifer's waiting. Yeah, here's the next feast day coming up. He's coming. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. No. It's not going to happen like that. It's going to be in a twinkling of an eye. And it's going to be a surprise. And I want you to have some hope. Quit listening to this nonsense out there. Quit bickering. Obey his commandments. He said, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. What were they? Love ye one another. Right? Help those that need help. Spend time worshiping and fellowshipping with God. Not just time looking at goofy YouTube videos. I can't save you. I can pray for you. I, I can't do anything. You have the same amount of power as I do. I'm nobody special. You see that? Pray for yourselves. Pray for your loved ones. Trust God. Okay, remember what I said in the beginning of this. Remember to pray for Israel and those people. 
Vicki and for Matthew and for Brother Steve and also Brother Patrick. I want to say a prayer with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne in the mighty name of your Son, Yeshua, and we ask that the Holy Spirit be released upon these that watch this, that you give them dreams and visions, that you give them hope, that you refresh in them a new spirit from you, God, right from the throne room. Help them undertake for their infirmities, help their families undertake for their situations and give them peace, almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus, your Son, in Yeshua's name we ask, give them peace through the knowledge that you are in control in Yeshua's name we ask, according to his words, that said, if you ask anything of the Father, he'll give it. If you ask it in my name, we're asking in his name for peace and for the Holy Spirit to outflow upon them, to give them hope, to wake them up, to let them have worship. Worship God. That's what he says. Worship him. He loves you. He's in charge. He's almighty God. That's why he told Israel, I don't want you to have a king. I want to be your king. The Lord wants to be your king. Let him be the king over your life. Worship him every day. Spend time before his throne. Not begging him for things you want, but telling him how much you love him and how much you appreciate him. That's what he wants. He wants us to love him and to worship him first. What's more important to you? Your job, your family, some hobby you have? What? What is separating you from God and from his will? That's what you need to look at. That's what you need to pray about. The Lord Jesus came and prayed in the garden and he said, I would that this cup would pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You see, it's about Almighty God's will. That's all it's about. And then trust him. He'll put you in the kingdom where he wants you. He will save you. He will do the work. It's him. We've all sinned, even King David, Elijah, Moses, Peter, Paul, John, all these people, they all sin. You see, it's about repentance. Repentance brings salvation to you. That's all you gotta do. It's not about all these systems, not trying to follow Jewish law or anything else. When we get there, when the kingdom's here, We'll keep the three feasts. But for now, all you need to do is worship the Lord and stay before him in prayer and repentance, and you'll be saved. Make that choice whose camp you'll be in. I want to thank each and every one of you for your support, and I want to say God bless each and every one of you. May he give you the strength to carry on, to have faith in spite of all the things you see with your eyes. Just like in that movie, The Matrix. Those things are God's secret to you, written in the hearts of the unbelievers and then sent out to you as a message from God so you can understand that no matter where you look, what book you pick up, what movie you see, somewhere in there, God is hiding, trying to reveal himself to these people. He's sending out a code, a distress code. Repent, I am coming soon. 